Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mental Training Thursdays. I'm Dr. Rachel Walker. I'm the Director of Psychological Health and Performance. And joining me today is Dr. Mac Brown, Assistant Director and Training Coordinator, and Chris Thomas. Um, for today, we continue our focus on Mental Health Awareness Month, since May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And this week's topic is identity empowerment. Um, but first, as we do every week, we have a question about last week's topic, which was on mental health as a team sport. So Chris is going to throw us the question. I don't want to admit anything is wrong because I'm afraid coaches or teammates will think differently of me. I just leave it in the locker room. How can I perform while secretly struggling? Yeah, that, I mean, I think that that's something that's very common among athletes. And we often will talk about the athlete mentality and how that can sometimes prevent us from admitting that we're struggling. Because I think when we have that, often what our minds do is create this rule that if I admit that something is wrong, if I'm struggling, therefore that means I'm weak. And when you have that athlete mentality, I think, you know, we're constantly striving for greatness as athletes and, and the strength with that. Um, and I think that there can be a misperception with that athlete mentality around um, admitting that something's wrong, that, that you're struggling and that therefore I'm weak. Um, when the reality is, is, it actually takes a lot of courage and bravery to admit that something isn't going well. Um, and that, that is strength in the, in that is strength. Um, and so I think that that is something that happens a lot with athletes. Um, I think what else I'll say on that is when we think about you as an athlete, you're human you're a person first and you can't take away this part from the rest of your body. And so when we think about performance, it's not just physical performance. It's how is your whole person impacting your performance and your brain, your mental health is part of your whole person. And if you're struggling with, with mental health, with mental concerns, that is going to impact your performance in, in sport, in life, in relationships, in academics, in work environments, right? Like it is all interconnected. And so I think the more that we can normalize it, that mental health is health, um, the easier it'll be for people to not just keep it in the locker room. I think often when we say leave it in the locker room, it is, it's not denying that there are things going on. And I think we can take it a step further where I need to deny that aspect of myself in order to perform, which isn't true. It can be both. Um, you can still be an excellent performer at an elite level and balance your mental health and struggles. Um, the other thing I would say is being able to reach out and talk about it to somebody who you trust. We use the phrase, name it to tame it. So the more that you talk about it, the more that it can take away some of that power that I think so often our minds create, especially when it comes to mental health, that, that, that it's this you know, really strong, impactful thing. Um, and sometimes it is. And sometimes our minds create this narrative that isn't so healthy or helpful for us. Um, the last piece I would say, and we mentioned this myth last week, is often what prevents people from reaching out for help is the thought that if I admit that I'm struggling, it's going to get worse. Or I won't be able to manage any emotions or feelings of being overwhelmed um, if I do admit that I'm, I'm struggling. And that is a myth, right? Like it goes along with sometimes our minds convince us of things that aren't necessarily true and that name it to tame it, right? So the more that we talk about it, 
the less power it has. And actually, if you're talking about it with mental health providers like ourselves at Psychological Health and Performance, we can give you different tools to help manage your mental health and performance. Thank you so much, Rachel. I think that like a number of things that you just touched on blends really well with our topic today around identity empowerment, because as Rachel was talking about with the athletic identity and that mindset, that can be a very prevalent, very strong identity that we feel very empowered by, but sometimes our identities, if we empower them a lot, it can become a double-edged sword if we get into this all or nothing kind of mentality, which was something that we talked about in our Mental Lift Monday handout this week was some of the steps in how we can empower our identity. And one of them was talking about how we can get into this all or nothing, black or white kind of thinking. And that includes around our identities. And that can create a lot of conflict and tension that ultimately doesn't help us stay empowered in the variety of identities that we hold and value and um, can really honor all at the same time, even when we sometimes think that can't be possible. So we wanted to provide you with an exercise, something that can help further what we talked about in Mental Lift Monday to really hone in on the identities that you have and the ones that empower you and that make you feel empowered and to be able to look at it in a way of, am I actually in a good balance with the things that are important and valuable to me? So I'm gonna share my screen and that way you all can see how you can actually do this um, for yourselves um, and create that kind of visual and really look at where are things lining up for me right now. So as you can hopefully see on my screen right now, here's just a, a circle and this circle represents you. Now, if you draw this on a piece of paper for yourself and you leave some room at the bottom, as I scroll down, you can see that I, I gave an example of, let's say this is an individual who wrote down some salient identities that they hold personally. So um, it could be things about your um, sexual orientation, your gender identity, your race, your ethnicity. Um, you know, if you, know, you are an athlete as a student athlete, and that can be a very uh, prevalent identity that you may hold. You know, maybe someone is first generation in college, um, but also these identities about characteristics that you hold that you know you hold as a valuable identity. For yourself. So what you can do is just take some time to reflect on what those identities are, kind of list them out. Um, doesn't have to be this many, it could be more than this, whatever is meaningful to you. And then the next step is translating those identities into this circle. So as an example of that, I'm going to share another way that maybe that individual would have kind of laid it all out. And as you can see in this example, maybe you know there aren't all of the identities listed, but you can see some of them are a bit larger than maybe some of the other ones. And what you can do through this exercise is actually look at, okay, are there identities that I listed at the bottom that are really important to me, but they, but they don't actually have a spot that I've identified within myself right now? Are, are they ones that I actually do wanna create space for? Are any of the identities that are taking up a large portion of myself, are those in the right proportion for me right now? So you can always look at this and then do that kind of evaluation and self-check of, are things actually in balance the way that align with the things that I value and prioritize? Now, as I was saying before, there are times where we can get into this mindset of, it's only able to be this one thing. So for example, Sometimes people think this is the only thing that can exist in myself right now. All the other things can't. And that is really something that when we talk about identity empowerment, we are talking about empowering all the identities that you have, all the ones that are of value to you, all the ones that provide meaning and create wellness for you. Because when you have that last example that I showed where one identity takes up everything, there are going to be deficits, there are going to be challenges that are going to arise from not having that balance and not being aligned with all the things that are valuable to you. So we wanted to give you that exercise to really expand upon our Mental Lift Monday from earlier this week.
Mac, I think one of the things that really hit home for me in thinking about my experiences as an athlete was that final screen that you showed and, and having the ah, athletic identity really take up such a huge portion of my identity when I was an athlete. And I'm, I'm also thinking that that probably resonates with some of our athletes, um, whoever's watching this, you know, I, I think one thing that that I would want to say with that is our priorities and empowerment of different identities can change over time. And so maybe that athletic identity is very strong. We might encourage you if it's filling your whole circle to really maybe reflect on whether that's healthy for you. Because I think when we weigh the athletic identity so strongly and put so much emphasis on it where there's no other, no room for other aspects of yourself that that can sometimes act as a double-edged sword and be not so healthy. Um, And, and with that, you know, there, there will probably be moments in time where that changes and that's okay. Right. Like if there, you had mentioned, if there are identities that aren't, there's not enough room in the circle for them to evaluate that. And if you really want that in there, how do you make room for that? And um, I think a large part of that is really doing some self-reflection and um, thinking about your values, like you mentioned, and what's important to you and really honoring those identities that you do want to empower. And I think so much of that plays into taking care of yourself and Um, when we think about mental health and physical health, that is part of that. And, and the spiritual side of things, the mental health side of things, the emotional health side of things. And next week we are going to be delving more into that as far as self care for mental health. Um, so if you join us next week, we will delve more into the self care aspect of, of mental health. Um, And that will wrap up our month long series for Mental Health Awareness Month. If you have questions about this week's topic on identity empowerment, um, the exercise on anything that was discussed today, please email Bob at robert.deal, D-I-E-H-L at colorado.edu. And each week we'll we'll spend a few moments uh, answering any question or a question that was asked. And as always, we'll wrap up with a quote from, this one's from Rene Descartes, I think, therefore I am.